The Power of Rest, today on Fixing the Money Thing. We lived in Oklahoma, and a guy asked us to come out and hunt at a farm there in Tahlequah Thanksgiving morning. Never been there. If you're a deer hunter, you want to scope things out. You want to make sure everything's to your advantage because deer don't volunteer to be killed. They try to avoid people. And if you're going to hunt deer, you have to learn their methods, where they run, you know, kind of learn where they're at, where they're feeding out. You, know, you, gotta, you have to kind of become what they think like to get one because they don't volunteer for dinner. Just kidding. Anyway, so I went out there, and he says, well, I don't know. There's this, there's this tree. Go, and this, go sit next to that big tree in that field over there. It's dark. You go out in the dark. I go out there in the dark. It gets light, and I find I'm sitting next to a tree, one tree in a harvested hay field. Now, if you are a deer hunter or any kind of you, the deer can see you in the middle of the field, right? No self-respecting deer is going to come moseying up to you in the middle of a field, when they see you in plain daylight, right? So I'm sitting there, but I have a supernatural weapon. Like Peter, James, and John did. I'm sitting thinking, I don't know, this doesn't look so good. But it's not based on only the circumstances. God's involved with this. And so this buck comes running behind me. I'm, I'm, like I'm here, the tree's here, and this buck is running through the field right for the tree, and I'm behind the tree, he can't see me. Until he gets to the tree, he smells me, and he puts the brakes on, and he snorts. He goes, whoa, what is this? He looks over at me, and I'm sitting right there. I look up at him. We're five yards apart. I say, hello. <laughs> he takes off, and I, I had the privilege. I dropped that deer. I took it home for dinner. We had venison, finally, after all these years. But it's a 130-yard shot. You ever seen whitetail run? When they're scared, they bounce. They move out. Sitting offhand, 30 out six, scoped out rifle. It's hard to get the crosshairs on a deer. It's running full speed, sitting down offhand. One shot, the deer's down. I was like, astonished. I knew that wasn't me. So the next year, I went out and did it again. Now it's been 30 years. I go out every year and get my deer 30, 40 minutes. I don't have time to tell you all the stories, but so many amazing stories. I could even uh, had the deer pinned down to the type, the size. I mean, I began to experiment with the kingdom. I found that it works very specifically. Now, I'll give you an update, for instance. I do this every year. On November 7th, now, I, I sow my seed for meat. I'm a meat hunter. I always say, give me a four-pointer bigger and a button buck. You get two. I, you know, I take two. So I sowed my seed this year for a four-point, four-point. Just in case someone doesn't hunt deer, they, what's a four-point? Four points. <laughs> and a button buck has little buttons, okay. Because I don't want to kill the does, because I want them to keep reproducing. So anyway, 15 minutes. It's like going to the grocery store. I walked back in the woods, climbed up in a tree stand, climbed down, took the deer home. In 15 minutes, bow hunting, I'm done. People say, oh, you love to hunt. I, don't, I hunt 15 minutes. <laughs> they, they think, oh, you're a big hunter, you love to hunt. And all. I hunted 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I hunted. Every year, not in 15 minutes, but every year. Now, here's the interesting. Kirsten, my youngest, is learning how to hunt by faith. Now, my, all my boys hunt by faith, and they've always dragged their deer in it just like I do. But she sowed her seed for an eight-point buck, and she missed it. Now, if you're a farmer and you miss the harvest, what do you do? What? You sow again. But she's learning that. She didn't sow again. So she and I went out, and I'm in a tree stand, and it's gun season, but she doesn't want to use a gun. They're too loud, she says. So she's using her crossbow, and she's about 50 yards from me. We're on the same trail, okay, the same trail. And so here comes this button buck. Remember I sewed for a seven-pointer bigger and a button buck. Here comes the button buck. And the button buck did something really crazy. Now, remember, Kirsten has a bow. And it, here's Kirsten. Here I am. It comes towards Kirsten, and then it goes around her, just outside bow range. Comes back to the trail and comes and stands under my tree. And just stood there. 
And this first time I've done this, I just, I know, Kirsten said it was cute. It was a, I just decided to let it go. <laughs> but Kirsten was totally amazed how that deer walked around her stand because it wasn't her deer and came. In fact, we could, he wouldn't go. He just stayed down there until we got out of the tree stand to go back in the house. He was still down there, and finally he just walked off. So you should be asking questions right now. How did the, how did the fish show up in Peter, James, and John's boats? How did the deer show up like that? How, why did the deer walk around Kirsten when she hadn't sown her seed for that deer and it on purpose went around her and came and stood under my tree as I had sown my seed for that? Questions should be going off, correct? The kingdom. You say, oh, Pastor, what does the kingdom mean? Laws? For instance, an airplane. Now, if you knew nothing about airplanes and here is a 20-ton piece of metal, and I say, you know, this, this is going to fly in the air at about, seven, uh, say, 560 miles an hour at about 40,000 feet, you'd laugh. you go, no, I wasn't born yesterday, dude. That weighs a lot. That thing cannot go in the sky. That is nuts. You're an, you're, you're, you no, know, it's just, forget it. I, not, not impossible. You'd walk off, Right? If you never knew what an airplane was. Because at 40,000 feet, you know what your future would be without a parachute or without an airplane. You know. You're not going to do that. But basically, the kingdom is a set of laws. So now, we don't cancel gravity. An airplane doesn't cancel gravity. It supersedes it. You've learned of a new law that allows you to travel a lot faster. As you take advantage of that law, your life has changed. Instead of walking to California, I don't know how long that'll take, but you can be there in three or four hours by jet. Totally transform your life. That's exactly how the kingdom of God operates. The earth curse system, the laws of the earth realm are limited, but the kingdom of God, its laws supersede the earth realm. And the sooner you begin to learn why that deer did that and why this happened and why those fish showed up and how Jesus tapped into the laws of the kingdom, your life will change as well. The answer is Luke chapter 6, verse 20. Blessed are the poor, for God feels sorry for them. And Christian give, Christians give them their leftovers and their broken stuff. <laughs> they, you reap what you sow. Christians. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God, a new set of laws. You can fly instead of walk. A different way of living. Ephesians 2.19, I read this last week. You are no longer foreigners and aliens. You are fellow citizens with God's people and members of his household. You are citizens. You have legal rights. There are benefits in the kingdom. There are benefits being part of God's household, sons and daughters. There are 7,000 promises in the Bible, 7,000 that God, the God that made everything you see and made you have given, has given to you personally that he's going to back up. 7,000 in the kingdom. But let's review for a minute. Adam and Eve were created. They had it all. They had the garden. They had no worry. They had no stress. They had no sickness and disease, but they gave it away because of a lie and deception. They rebelled against God, lost their position. God speaks to them after they rebelled. Genesis chapter 3, again, this is review, but this is very important as we're setting our posture, and you've got to pass the test. Adam said, or God said to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Now, Adam rebelled against God and came under the jurisdiction of Satan. Remember, the Bible says that Satan became the God of this world. And so he brought all mankind under that jurisdiction. So basically, Adam cursed the earth realm, not God. He had legal jurisdiction over it. He's the one that brought it under Satan's jurisdiction. He is the one that cursed it. God did not. You got it? God did not curse it. Now he says, through painful toil, you'll eat of the earth all the days of your life. It'll produce thorns and thistles for you, and you'll eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you'll eat your food until you return to the ground. So the painful toil and sweat system is how you grew up, painful toil and sweat. If you need something, you immediately begin to compute how to labor for it, more painful toil and sweat. But Jesus said, the unbeliever, those who don't know God's kingdom system, run after the things of life painfully toil and sweat after the things of life, 
So that's how we think without knowing that an airplane can fly, we'll think, how fast can I walk? You getting this? If I don't know that there's an airplane, the only thing is I can grip my teeth and I can walk faster. It's not going to get there, friend. You will never reach your potential in your own strength. You were created by God to be with God, filled with his spirit, with supernatural strategies in the earth realm. So you've got to learn the kingdom way of living to reach your potential and what you dream to do. You'll never reach your dreams by yourself. And not happen. Not happen. When Adam lost his provision, he lost the Garden of Eden. He lost it all and he became a survivalist. He became a professional nose to the grindstone, painful toil and sweat survivalist. He lost his identity as well. His identity now was tied to what he did, not who he was. This is very, very important. If you saw Adam before he fell, you would see the glory of God on him, and he would carry an anointing and authority of the kingdom of God himself. Now, he rebelled against God, but he is still created in God's image. You are still created in God's image, and you bear the seed of royalty. Adam lost the position, but you were still created for royalty, to rule, right? Right. So he lost his identity. In fact, if we ask people who they are, they answer with what they do. If I meet someone and say, hey, how are you? You know, who are you? I'm the carpenter. I'm a computer specialist. I'm a, am I right? Why is that? Because in the earth realm, respect and honor is judged by labor and who can win the rat race. But you don't say I'm the son of. If you were the king's son, a prince, or the king's daughter, a princess, how would you answer that? I am princess so-and-so. I am prince so-and-so. You would not answer with what you do because you have servants that do the doing. You're in the business of ruling. Are you with me? Next time, we continue The Power of Rest 